Hello, everybody, and welcome to Stephen and Walter Live. Yes, where's Walter, you're saying? He just went upstairs to get his phone. He forgot it. Uh, we're a little discombobulated today, as you probably are, too, because this is not our usual time, as you know. Usually, we're on at 4 p.m. Uh, today, we're on an hour early because here in Canada, it is Thanksgiving. It's Thanksgiving weekend. It's a long weekend, and we're going off for a family dinner to my sister's place, and she wants us there for 5.30, so we decided we would do this an hour earlier this week, this week only, um, and uh, so we get there at the time she wants us to be there for. So Walter, of course, was until five minutes before we went to air, was sitting upstairs busily sewing. Doesn't sew any other day, but today he decides to sew. Yeah, I thought I tried to get those buttons on. Yeah, and your success rate is? No, I was measuring wrong and everything. Hi, Andy. Hi, Andy. Andy, while I've got you here, I don't know if you've been talking to uh, Jeannie or not, but anytime I send you an email, it bounces back. Uh, your provider, I don't know if your mailbox is full, and Jeannie says the same thing happens to her, so it could be your mailbox is full. Hi, Jennifer. Yes, thank. Uh, happy Thanksgiving to you, too, um, as well. Turkey Day. Turkey Day. All the turkeys are out. In fact, we're going to talk about some turkeys a little bit later on. The two-legged kind, not the... Well, I guess turkeys only have two legs, too, don't they? Well, whatever. Um, but anyways, yes, so we're on today one hour earlier, so it's hard to say who will be here today because, you know, other people... I did put out the reminder, but, you know... People get used to their habits, so they might not remember. Hi, Amy. Um, so anyways, oh, Suzanne's here. Su uh, Suzanne, I got your pictures. Um, I don't know if you saw my email or not, but I just wanted to verify that those were for uh, an upcoming Idiot Quilter episode as opposed to for the retreat, because you already sent me uh, a picture for the retreat. So just confirm that for me. That would be great. Um, Andy says, not sure because I'm still getting emails. I'll check security settings. Yeah, I don't know. It It's your provider's Comcast and it bounces them back to me, but it doesn't immediately bounce them back. It says that, um, the time, time, de delivery time has expired or something like that. So I don't know what that's all about. Weird. Maybe they don't like, uh, maybe they, they well, no, if they didn't want to accept me that you wouldn't, I don't know. I don't know how that works. Um, Walter well, is away. Of course I'm away. Well, yeah, it is an hour earlier, though, for us here. But, yeah. Yeah, he's been up for a good two hours. Um, Green Quilts is here. Hello, Green Quilts. Happy Thanksgiving. I'm having a chicken sandwich. <laughs> okay. Angel's here. Hi, Angel. And Katie Crafts is here from Denver. Great. Martha's Creative Life is here. Hey, you too. Walter's away. Yep. Um, and Cheryl is here. So, uh... Yeah, we got lots of people in here, so I guess we can get started. Um, you're probably wondering about the title of this. Should YouTube be your therapy? Well, we're going to explain that in a minute. And I just want to say before I forget to say it, we are probably going to say a few things today that are going to sound a little nasty. So she got your uh, she got her confirmation email from the retreat. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. Um, because, yeah, that's the one that bounced back to me. So, mm -hmm. but if you got it, that's good. Okay, everything is, is okay. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Dana. Um, Happy Thanksgiving to you too, Dana. Yeah. So, like I was saying, later on in the show today, when we get talking about what the topic is, I'm going to say a few things, and I hope it doesn't offend some people. Um, my point is not to offend uh, with that, but... What we're going to talk about is maybe a sensitive issue for some people. There could be triggers, as I guess that's the popular term now. So just to let you know uh, about that, um, we're going to try to be kind. <laughs> but it's very hard with some of this stuff. Anyways, before we get to that, um, well, thanks, uh, LaWayne. Um, and Judy's here. Hi, Judy. So... Walter's what's Walter working on? Well, I'm not still finishing my shirts, but and I was busy trying to put buttons on today. So someday you will see the shirts. Someday. I noticed a mistake on my shirt. Oh, really oh you have a and mistake. And I can't really fix it. So oh, oh a mistake. It's and you it's said not your a terrible and thing, you said no. your shirt. 
Yeah, well, no, it'd probably be your shirt. Actually, it won't be that noticeable. Oh, yeah, I get imperfection. I, if you wear your shirt the way, the only way time it would be noticeable is if you button it up to the top. Oh, well, that's not happening <laughs> because I can joke myself. Um, new cool thing life is here. There's one of those little things that you look at and you go, damn, I wish I noticed that earlier. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't. I wish I had, if I should have looked at it and pointed it out to you, that would be fair play. You always point them out in my quilts. So, but anyway, so that's what you've been working on. Wow, well, mm. what a thrill. Uh, what have I been working on? Lots of things. Always lots and lots of things. Let me find some pictures here. Uh, okay, so there's the ugly quilt. You've heard of ugly Christmas sweaters. This is the ugly Christmas quilt. That's the one I talked about before. That's tulip pink, which I'm surprised it's tulip pink. It is flannel. I added the diamonds in the center with the little gnomes embroidered on them in the whole bit. And uh, you, it, this picture I took before I put it on Lucy, but I do have it quilted. I just have to add uh, the binding now to it, and then I'll show it. And then I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I'm so chatty. We talked about that. Um, I think it would make a wonderful dog blanket. And... Uh, our niece's dog, Freddy, who's a big Doberman. This may be who's getting it for Christmas. It may be Freddy. I don't know. Um, I'm not impressed. And I did discover that um, when you quilt on flannel, uh, the weight of thread that I was using just sort of sunk right into the flannel. You really don't see the quilting. So I don't know if when I wash it, if it'll puff up a little bit to give it some texture. I don't know. But anyways, I, I mean, when I bought it, I thought it would be a quick project. And it was a quick project. I just realized it was going to be an ugly project. <laughs> so um, anyways, that's one thing I've been working on. And, okay, let's move. I've been working on Christmas socks um, for Christmas. But I just found a couple of new designs that, uh, these embroidery companies, I bought these, I think, from Designs by Juju and uh they just came out with a bunch of new ones too that i really like so i'm going to make a few more with using the newer designs uh as well and since we're going over to my sister's today for thanksgiving dinner i decided i always like to take a little hostess gift so i made her some halloween um napkins yes i know they're not really thanksgiving napkins but she's right now been making these ouija pillows yeah, some, Ouija board pillows. Ouija board pillows. Or, or, uh, she does uh, hand embroidery. Yeah, cross stitch. And cross stitch or whatever. And she does all these things uh, for that are seasonal seasonal, and things like that. She's really so, good at it. Her she stuff. made a whole bunch that look like Ouija boards. Yeah. And, uh, and they all have like variations of the Ouija board uh, theme in such a way that says sort of like Happy Halloween. And yeah, stuff, stuff like, like that, that. You know, so. In them. Yeah, they're really cool. So I thought, well, this would be pretty good. These were quick to do because uh, I just did them with my serger. And uh, I made the napkin rings, they're pumpkins, on the 3D printer. They didn't take that long to make either. And in fact, I'm making Christmas napkins now with uh, uh, reindeer. I think I have a picture of it. Here we go. I made uh, eight Christmas napkins um, doing the same thing with the serger. But these napkin rings are reindeer ears on them which are kind of cute so i'm going to make um some matching placemats to go with them and they could be a potential christmas gift like four placemats and four napkins i'll have to decide whether i i think i'm going to mix them up two green two red with the the placemats so i'll have two sets kind of a thing hmm, one set might go to the neighbors this year i don't know we'll see uh about that and then, of course, I got all my Christmas, or not my Christmas, my Halloween decorations. So decorated the family room and just got some little fairy lights that are purple. Saw them at um, Giant Tiger, which is sort of a discount store for four bucks. And I've got those in there, too. You can't, this picture I took before I got the lights. But they're fun. And those are in the hoop embroidery. And on so chatty, if you've seen it this week, we talked about this stuff, how you make all of these and things tips and tricks and whatnot when you're making it in the background you can see my halloween quilt and there's some other decorations on the other tables as well some of them are 3d printed 
uh, too. And, okay, two things. I just made these today. Um, I found this design for making this uh, key fob kind of a thing. And I'm thinking, if my idea this year is to put together sort of goodie bag of things for each of the ladies at Ultimate Sewing. So I might include uh, one of these key fobs. Um, you can make them with different fabrics and different colors of thread and whatnot. And the other thing is, somebody suggested to me, I don't know who it was, they suggested seam rippers on my 3D printer. Because I was saying, well, I didn't know what to make next on the 3D printer. And I, I'm getting tired of making, like, little statues and action figures and things like that. Because they just sit on the shelf and gather dust. I want to make something that's useful. Somebody suggested seam rippers, the handles. And I thought, well, yeah, I've seen those, but I've never seen them in 3D so uh, printing. So, yeah, sure enough, there's a whole collection of these things. So I downloaded them. and uh, But I thought, why not make it unique? So this is a prototype. Um, they won't necessarily all be red. They'll be different colors. In fact, I might make them in sort of a marble kind of filament. But you see a little gnome on the bottom of it? So... I combined a couple of models together to create this, and I bought these um, seam rippers that I glue down inside them. They, they're not the best seam ripper in the world. They're cheap. Like, I got 40 of them for 20 bucks, okay, on Amazon, so that tells you how uh, <laughs> great they are. Um, I looked into buying the ones, you know, how people make those acrylic and wood ones, uh, wood turners make them, and they, they're very pricey to buy. Like, i 80 bucks I've seen them being sold for and things like that um, and they are very nice but I went looking for the inserts for like one end has a seam ripper and the other end has a stiletto and you know you can pull them out and turn them the other way and it closes them up I did order two seam ripper inserts and two stiletto ones but they cost six dollars and 49 cents each um, you get a discount if you order them in large quantities, but that's probably like just for what I ordered, like two seam rippers, two stilettos with the shipping with tax and they're shipped from Guelph, Ontario, which is only about a two hour drive from us. Um, so shipping wasn't too bad, just Canada post. Um, it still was like 50 bucks. So, I mean, to make a whole bunch of these is very very pricey so i don't think i'm going to i'm i'll try to make a couple of special ones but maybe one for me one for walter um when i get these other inserts which are much better built than these ones but yeah it's a novelty item um so yep yeah, that's what i've been there's a close-up so a little noom down here i think he's kind of cute on that one um but as I said, I'll change the color uh, for this, too. Um, so, yeah, I've been busy. And I do have a quilt that I... Uh, the quilt top, I finished it on the weekend. Um, I'll show that to you another time. It'll probably show up this week on some of my stuff. So what are people saying here? Um, oh, I wish that wouldn't come up all the time. Bugging us to advertise. Okay. Um... Ooh, a lot of things happening here since I was blabbing on. Uh, who did I miss? Uh, Nancy's here. Hi, Nancy. Uh, Kathy's here. Hi, Kathy. Ugly quilt's beautiful. <laughs> well, it's to each their own. I mean, it's not horrible, but it just, it's actually, I shouldn't call it as ugly as much as it's boring. That's why I put the gnomes on it, just to break it up. And I was hoping that with the quilting, I could make it. But I didn't realize that the quilting thread kind of sinks into flannel. So there goes that idea. Um, hi, Nancy number two or three. Nancy LaVenture. Um, Sorry, excuse me. Oh, well, are we keeping you up? Yes, you are. Oh, I should <laughs> switch over here so people can it's see it. Threw my whole day up. Uh, too bad. Too bad. Um, right, so several people like it. Yeah, that's what I think. Uh, uh, Freddie, what a wonderful doggy gift. Yeah. He's a big dog. Um, 
Yeah, the Christmas socks are cute. I'm gonna stick them, stick chocolate or something in them, and that kind of thing. Uh, maybe give one to uh, each of our, my nephew and niece, and maybe your nephew or niece and nephew and or wife and their two kids, our great our great nieces. Um. Uh, Sherry's here. Hi, Sherry. Cheryl Hogan. I don't know if I said hello to you or not, but I am now. Um, so the sign from Elaine is looking for a nice charm pack to do the quilt you're doing from. So very easy. Oh, yeah. Oh, so you've seen that. Uh, did you see that? Uh, oh, yeah. I think I talked about it on uh, Idiot Quilter this week. Yeah. Well, I have a ton of charm packs. So I just grabbed um, one. That's the beauty of it. You can do it with anything. And charm packs are just easier than having to cut everything out from, uh, you know, from a yardage. Uh, oh, Cheryl, that was your idea, Cheryl? Yeah, I didn't think I'd find any of those. I want one. Yeah, so what? <laughs> I want, I want, I want, I want, I want. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> I'm just joking, Cheryl. Um, let's see. Patsy says, Happy Thanksgiving. Mary Ann Kushner's here from Pittsburgh. Hi, Mary Ann. Um, Jan's here. You're late, Jan. Uh, yeah, if it's got a gnome on it, you know, it's mine. Uh, Dana says, Stephen, I would like to suggest that you figure out how to make a top cover for clover seam rippers. Are you talking about the ones that the tops never fit? Oh, yeah, those stupid things. Yeah. Well, if I if I could design, if I learned the, the AutoCAD programs that use to design this stuff, I would be dangerous. But I don't. And... You don't have dedication to do that. No, I don't. Because it eats into my quilting time. So that's why I don't. Um, Barb. Hi, Barb. Yeah. Walter forgot too, so he just made it here by the skin of his teeth. Um, yeah, I know. I thought I had another hour. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sherry says, Stephen, anything you make after the one block wonder quilt is going to look plain. It's warm and cozy. Well, that's probably true, Sherry, because that other one certainly, I haven't got it quilted yet. Um, I'm still kind of debating what I'm going to quilt with. And, uh, but yeah, um, I'll get to it. I want to make sure the quilting in, it enhances it, but doesn't take away from it either, because it's so busy. So, you know, you got to find the right design. Um, Teresa, hi, Teresa. She says, amazingly able to drop in. She's questioning why we were on earlier. Yeah, well, we if you'd been here last week, Teresa. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> no, uh, it's because we're going to my sister's for dinner tonight, and she wants us over there at 5.30, and so usually we run from 4 till about 5.30, and it's about a half-hour drive, or a little less than that, uh, over to her place, so, yeah, we're on one hour early. Um, but that's just this week. We'll be back to regular time later. Hi, Jeannie. So, those are the things I've been working on. Um, and I did mention that we did a special, uh, not special, but our So Chatty this week was all about Halloween decor, making it within the hoop embroidery. Um, a lot of people are shy away from their embroidery machines to, from doing anything except maybe a monogram on a towel or something. The embroidery machines do so much more than just that. And so we talk about that with the in the hoop. I love doing in the hoop stuff. Yeah, actually, it was pretty amazing because when I got my embroidery machine, I only thought of actually just doing embroidery. I didn't realize that there were all these other projects that you can do that are in addition to just plain embroidery or a combination of embroidery and uh, and applique and and that you can actually make 3D projects out of it, which is quite amazing. Yeah, you can do a lot of things with an embroidery machine. But I know it can be intimidating. Uh, I know the first time that I thought about attempting something like that and i thought Ooh, there's a lot of instructions there's a lot of things you got to do but i did it and once you've done it once start with something simple and once you've done it once every other project you do 
is very, basically done the same way. It's just maybe more pieces to it or something like that. Um, they are time consuming, but we talked all about that on So Chatty. We talked about things that, you know, tips and tricks and techniques that will help you out with that if you've never done it before. I said, Jan says, uh, um, crap, didn't think you would notice. Yeah, really, Jan? Is there any way I could not notice you? <laughs> I don't think so. Christmas mug rugs. I use them all the time. My sister-in-law made me adorable gingerbread and frosty Kleenex box covers. Okay, there's so many things wrong with what you just told me to do. First of all, I have done Christmas mug rugs before. And to be honest, uh, for me, I don't use a mug rug. <laughs> I, I just don't like making them. Because to me, they're useless. I mean, I don't know. Well, the other thing, too, is, you know, you can make some really nice mug rugs, and then you get coffee on it. Why does it throw in the washing machine? Well, yeah, you can throw it in the washing machine, but, you know, you can only throw it in the washing machine so many times before they start to fade or whatever. I don't know. I mean, I just have a... I don't know why... After Christmas, how long do you use them? I suppose. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Um, but then Christmas Kleenex boxes... Now those, those are useless. <laughs> nothing, nothing says old lady than clean eggs box covers. I'm sorry, and the reason I say that is because my grandmother it's like those toilet roll covers. Yeah, people. she had those too. My grandmother used to crochet and knit clean eggs box covers coming out of the yin yang. She used to give them all to the church bazaars and things like that. And she made those toilet roll covers. Do you remember the ones with the doll in it? The cheap plastic doll. And yet you, you, you have this big skirt. It's usually crocheted or knit. And it hangs over the toilet paper roll and the doll's legs are in there. And it sits on the back of your toilet tank or on a shelf or something like that. My grandmother had those. Those things were creepy, actually, but no. One thing you'll never find me making is a toilet paper roll cover or a Kleenex box cover. Besides, Kleenex boxes are so pretty. Well, not this one, but, you know, they come with that idea. Uh, anyways, yeah, anyway. I am being just a little facetious here. Patty, Patsy says, I'm thinking seriously about a new embroidered machine. MB7. Stephen, did you do the Christmas tree skirt by Juju? MB7. Yeah, that's the one that's the seven. Has the, it's a Joni industrial one that has seven. Oh, oh, uh, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I have not yet done the tree skirt. I have it. I have the, I bought the pattern, the whole bit. And I was just thinking about that this morning that. Maybe I should get started on it, but I don't think I'm going to have enough time to get it done before Christmas this year. So I don't know. I've got other things that I'm doing, too. To add, she made them in her embroidery machine. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, 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 that's what I thought you meant, Jan. I've done mug rugs before. I haven't done Kleenex box covers, though. Um, The MP6700P doesn't do hoop embroidery? No. No. It's a sewing machine only. Yeah. You have to, uh, uh, MP, I'm talking about uh, the 6700P uh, sewing machine, uh, and Janome sewing machine, if you're talking about. <laughs> it uh, It does not do embroidery. You need an embroidery machine for that. I'm just laughing at Jan's. Listen, Grandpa, you're stepping on soft ground now. I have my, my claws and fangs out now. Poo poo head. <laughs> Jan, I didn't say you were an old lady. I just said old ladies in general. <laughs> oh, don't cross Jan, she'll kill you. Rebecca, hi, Rebecca. Did you know that actually the American Christmas sweaters, or ugly sweaters, as many call them, were the inspiration behind the Tula's Holiday Homies fabric? No, oh, I no. did not know that. Well, you know, now that you say that, that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Because I was thinking... This doesn't seem like Tula's usual design, but, hmm, okay, that makes sense. Still ugly, but I guess now it's ugly with a humorous bend to it. Um, I guess uh, Tula was being somewhat ironic. Uh, Andy says, years ago I made a Kleenex box cover out of plastic canvases. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
I've seen those. You mean the ones that you take the the plastic with the holes in them and that you're supposed to do cross stitch in them? Is that what you're talking about? Because there's kits you can get for that kind of thing too, I've seen. Yeah. Nancy says, I made those, Stephen, but I'm almost 74. Yeah. Well, that mean, there was a day and an age when those were considered like really cute and fashionable and everything. I mean, but they definitely date a person. I'll tell you that, really. I mean, probably the majority of us on here remember those kind of things. But, you know, the millenniums probably don't. Gen X or Gen Y or whatever the different ones are. Uh, mm. Moldy, hi. Oh, moldy lasagna. Hi, moldy lasagna. Veronica. Hi, Veronica. And Barb, I don't know if I said hi to you. Um, yeah, Barb, I remember that the plastic canvas thing. Because I think I bought some once to try, and, well, I never got far with it. Um, Kathy says, I prefer useful projects as well. Right now I'm making a new cover for a restored high chair for my grandson. I'm using Star Wars fabric, uh, Mandalorian. It looks pretty awesome if I do say so myself. Yeah, a cover. So you mean like... Um, restored high chair. Yeah, so uh, like a cover as in like the seat cover kind of a thing. Um, who's retired, Martha? Susan retired for a long time. I don't think you mean me, do you? Because I've been retired for almost, a, well, for over 10 years. <laughs> uh, holiday homies is hard to find nowadays. Design is ugly but trendy. Hmm. Mm. So what you're telling me is I inadvertently picked up something that's very trendy and hard to get. So my quilt must be what worth about that. hot pads and pot holders? Oh uh, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, one, we have lots of those, and I like silicone ones. <laughs> yeah, I prefer the silicone ones. Uh, oh, moldy. Martha was referring to moldy. Hmm. Well, you're going to enjoy retirement. I hope you have lots of things to keep you going with it because it's great. Oh, uh, yeah, seat cover, Kathy says. Okay, well, lots of ideas for lots of things, but um, I'll tell you one thing. I'm getting kind of sick of making Christmas stuff because I've been making it since August, and I'm not done yet. And I don't know who I'm giving this stuff to. Okay, Jan, don't be saying me, 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 because I know you're going to. You're going, me, 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 me. Uh, I made one Barbie doll bedroom furniture for her baby sister. Bed, bed armor. armor, dresser, and I made a crochet afghan for the bed. That, that was, was the last one. of my plastic. <laughs> 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 yeah, you were ambitious there, Andy. Uh, but uh, anyway, so uh, what else? Oh, uh, for those of you that... Uh, oh, no, update on... Uh, no, I'll do this one first. So yesterday I was on uh, uh, the guy who sewed, uh, yeah, Sean, the guy who sews, you know Sean. Uh, Sean sometimes comes on here and whatnot, He's uh, I've interviewed him before, and he has these brekkie shows on Saturday mornings at 8 o'clock with different people, so he did one with me, and it was a lot of fun, and um, we're trying to come up with something we can do together, uh, a collaboration of some sort as well. Um, so if you didn't see that, do check it out. Um, we talked about Australia because of course, Sean is from Australia and we've been there and you know how much we love Australia. So we talked about that and, uh, talked about the fair. He won a lot of ribbons at the fair. He and his wife. Barb um, saw you. Yeah. Oh, Barb saw me. Yeah. Bigger than life. Um, so yeah, check that out. And that would be great for Sean, too, so you'll get some more views and things like that. And if you don't subscribe to Sean, you should, because his stuff is really quite good. Um, what else is on my list here? I'm out of order. Um, okay, retreat update. I now have 82 people signed up for the retreat. I can handle 10 more. But... I will establish a waiting list as well because, you know, life happens and I always anticipate that I'll have probably about 10% of the people that have registered for it drop out a few days or a week uh, before <laughs> it happens. So that will open up spots. And if you're on my waiting list, uh, 
then I'll add you in there. If it like, I'll go down the waiting list. It'll be in the order that these things come into me. But there are still ten spots left. So if you've been thinking about it but haven't made up your mind, well, you know what I say: you snooze, you lose. Um, so you know, get on with it, <laughs> and I'll get you in there. But um, this will be great. I'm working madly at it, and uh, it should be a really great day. Um, so that's good. And we have Purple Wall said they missed me at Brecky. Purple. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah well, I'll join in next time they have one after midnight. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, that's not happening. Um. Well, Patsy. There's an easy way to get around family. Just don't screw off. <laughs> Always works for me. I don't. Amy C says, I'm super excited for the retreat. I think it will be a fun day. It will be. It always is. Um, I will have no hair left. Yeah, I'm missing my sewing day just to be at the retreat. What? Uh, the uh, group are having a sewing day that day, remember? Oh, no, I'd forgotten. Yeah. Well, too bad. <laughs> yeah yeah well the last one you were at that was a thrill wasn't it yeah i know it was different yeah, very different <laughs> yeah okay i mean when someone's there sewing leather outfits that no they're oh. sewing bondage implements oh uh, okay so <laughs> kind of sewing are you into <laughs> yeah um we had craft and chat this past week, and I think we broke an all-time record for craft and chat. I think at the height of it, we had twenty-two people on craft and chat. That's remarkable, um, and it was great. We had a good time, learned a lot, and got a lot of things done. At least I got a lot of things done. So uh, yeah, next one will be the first Wednesday in November. So if you missed that one, maybe so Judy's recovering one. from COVID, and not sure exactly how strong she will be right now. Well, you're staying at home for the retreat, so I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. At least we can't catch it from you. Speaking of it, we went yesterday to get our fifth shot. We haven't got it yet. Because. The only one that was available was Moderna and Pfizer had just been uh, approved. approved. And I went on the online booking system and it had an option to get Pfizer because that's what it, all our other shots have been. And. Uh, and we went there and they said, oh, well, it's just been approved. We don't have it yet. But they had it on the They website. had it on their booking site. Yeah, for it. And uh, Talk about organization. And we said, nope, we'll book later then when the other one becomes available. Because the Moderna one just does the original. No, it does the original and it does the first variation of the Omicron virus. But, but the ones that are circulating mm -hmm. now are four and five. Yeah. And apparently there's a new one. <laughs> That has been found somewhere in the States, I think. Well, Cheryl's got COVID right now, too, she says. Don't feel too bad, but I don't feel like sewing. Mm, sorry to hear. Yeah. So what do you put to how you got exposed to it? Is it just because people now are, like, not taking the precautions we were taking before, do you think? Um I don't know what it is. I mean, we wear our masks in certain environments. Other environments, we don't. It's kind of a hit and miss thing anymore. Um, mind you, you walk into some place and hear somebody go, <coughs> and you go, ah, quick, where's the mask? Where's the mask? <laughs> but I don't know. But anyways, I guess we're it's we have to learn to live with it. I guess mm -hmm. nothing else we can do. Um, but anyways, we're not going to talk about that because. Oh my God! Uh, that's been done to the them. The pandemic—that's so last year, <laughs> as they say. Um, so we are finally going to get our new doors and windows. We got a call last week. They're coming on the twenty-fourth, no, twenty-fifth and the twenty-sixth, right after the retreat. Um, with that, so yeah, it means then I'll have to clean out this room a little bit so they can get at the windows. Not looking forward to it, but. At least it's coming before. Hopefully there, we don't have snow before then. Because there mm. is always that possibility. Um, but anyway, so yeah, that was good news, well, I guess. Patsy wants to know what we'll have for Thanksgiving dinner. Probably turkey. Probably turkey. Turkey dressing and gravy and pumpkin pie and various vegetables. Yeah. My sister always does a nice, nice job on it. And 
Oh, we have a special guest. My sister sent me an email to tell me this. My nephew has a girl, a new girlfriend. We have not met her, but apparently she's going to be at my sister's place for dinner today. And my sister's put it in an email. Just wanted to let you know that William's girlfriend's coming for dinner too. So I wrote back to her and said, so, okay, just, I guess I have to be on my best behavior then. I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. I don't know. Um, don't, I, maybe she doesn't want to scare her off. Because <laughs> my, ne my nephew is getting a little long in the tooth. Okay, so, well, but anyway, so it'll be interesting. Uh, we've never met his, the girlfriend he had back some time ago, quite a while ago. So, yeah, this will be interesting. Heaven knows what my nephew has told this girl about us. I don't know. Okay, my uncles are coming. My uncle Stephen's really weird. Actually, <laughs> our, our menu is probably not quite the same as the States for stuff, because I think people in the States often have, like, mac and cheese and stuff with that with your thanksgiving dinner don't you i don't know i'm That's not what i ever heard well we don't we don't do that i don't know i don't know where you heard that i heard that from somewhere that they have mac and cheese with it well you can have mac and cheese with anything yeah i know I but guess. that's not something we do in canada but i don't know well maybe my sister will surprise us maybe she'll have ham maybe who knows or maybe flank steak i don't know we <laughs> He has had various things before for Thanksgiving, so I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. Usually it's turkey, though. Yeah. Well, I don't have to cook it. We don't have to cook it, so that's okay by me. Um, see, I'm just back up here. Um, Cheryl says, I have no idea how I got it. Went to Europe in August and September 12. In August and September, 12-night cruise and came back healthy. Hmm. The only a place Luan says a mask is still required is on transportation system. Yeah, we'll. I, I am happy to get the new windows in because it's just been so long. I just want them to get them in and get out because I'm just not looking forward to the preparation and the mess afterwards with it all. Um, actually, it wasn't my idea anyways to get them. Yeah. He's been biting at the chomp for these for ages. I mean, well, yeah, we kind of do need them, I guess. It's, but we could have waited another year. But yeah, then, I know, but we could have waited another year till we're 100, so. Yeah, whatever. Uh, yeah, Jan, okay. Well, it depends. Wait, you go over there trying to get a drink. Yeah, and then trying to get a word in edgewise. Well, because, yeah. geez, because the people, because there's a lot of things there's for people, people that are starved for conversation. conversation. <laughs> I guess. Okay, I know what Jan's thinking. She's going, "What you mean? Somebody talks more than you?" Oh yeah, yeah, my sister and oh, my yeah. nephew and, and my niece, niece. <laughs> and all at once, and they all talk together. Yeah, at once, over top of each other. <laughs> it's very lively, very lively. Yeah. Um, backing up here, Patsy says, no mac and cheese for me, please. Okay. Uh, Judy says she heard that mac and cheese is served as well. Yeah. And Kathy says, no, I don't do mac and cheese with ours. Okay. No mac and cheese. Cheryl says Thanksgiving in Detroit either. Anna says no mac and cheese. I guess it's a stereotype. It's one of those urban legends. I don't yeah, know. She'll probably, if she has turkey, she'll have cranberry sauce. I don't know if she makes it herself or not. What, no. cranberry sauce? Yes, so cranberry sauce is not something I was brought up with, so I don't really have it. Don't need it. Well, there's nothing to making it, because you either get it out of a can, or you get uh, the berries, and you boil them with a lot of sugar uh, for, like, until they go pop, and then uh, then you spend half a day cleaning up your kitchen, because they're blowing up everywhere. Now, Sherry says, in the South, we have fried okra and deer meat. Mm. venison i don't like jeremy no i well i've never had a lot of it but i i had it when i was younger a lot younger i only had it once and yeah, it I was know. once was enough <laughs> mind you what i had was 
pretty wild and gamey because it was somebody in my family shot it. Um, or they got it from somebody that shot it. I think my mm-hmm. grandmother had it. Uh, Barb says, and I believe that those in the States use canned cranberries sliced on a plate. Always make my own fresh cranberry. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> nothing says tacky tar- Thanksgiving that when they bring out the cranberries and you still see the rings of the can on it as it jiggles in the dish. <laughs> oh, that breaks me up. <laughs> you see that? Um, I mean, it doesn't taste bad or anything. It's just, you know, at least smooth out the can rings, or rings of the can on it. Mac and cheese is a southern thing. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, and it says they make fresh. Uh, Sherry, where are you, dear? I'm in Alabama. Okay. Angel, Angel says, not all of us have that stuff at Barba. Oh. Green says, make sure you're getting triple paned windows with gas between. Yeah, we're getting low. We're getting a uh, high efficiency window. So yeah, um, we should be at what they're costing us. Uh, Moldy Lasagna says she talks more than you. I talk more than you. Well, well thanks, Moldy, for that. I'm glad there are people. Uh, <laughs> too. Jan says, "How about run in the family?" Actually, my sister has always been chatty Kathy uh, with it. But, you know, my mother and my father were not, really. Um, well, my dad could be, uh, depending on the area. Well, it depends. When your sister was working, uh, at, she had enough conversation when she was working that she wasn't really talkative when she was at home. But yeah. She isn't working anymore, so now she's really yeah. talkative. She's st- start for adult <laughs> conversation, I guess. I don't know. Um Marianne, they make fresh cranberry there. And Martha Rooney from Kentucky. Okay. And Veronica says it's not Thanksgiving unless you have canned cranberry sauce. Okay. Teresa, green bean casserole. Didn't we try that once? Yeah, your sister made it once. Yeah. Too. No thanks. No. <laughs> I mean, it's not horrible. It's just why? <laughs> just why? <laughs> um. Jan said, I suppose it depends on how it's made. Yeah, but... I guess. Yeah. I just had porridge, per- and porridge and blueberries. blueberries. Oh, purge, purge, <laughs> porridge, porridge and blueberries. I think it's porridge. I think porridge. Okay, I haven't had porridge in a long time. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I like porridge. Uh Kathy says I'm getting a headache thinking about all that talking at your Thanksgiving dinner. Yep, I'm the quiet one. <laughs> well, yeah, it is what it is. Veronica says, it's not Thanksgiving unless we have canned cranberry sauce. <laughs> no, turkey here is done in the oven. We don't deep fry anything. No. Well, <laughs> yeah, we, we don't, but people have. People have. There was a craze of it at one yeah. point in time, but I think everybody went back to doing it in the oven. Yeah. Um, and Tree says, I make the cream of mushroom soup that goes in it myself first. Well, that might make it more interesting. Uh, whatever. It's just not something that turns my crank. Um, because purple wall says because French is deep fried onions are delicious. No, I don't like deep fried onions either. <laughs> oh, French is deep. Oh, I know what you mean. A spell check must have got it. French is deep fried onions. Those are the ones that come in the can. You're talking about. I have mm. had those. I had a recipe years ago that mm. I did that with. Remember with chicken? Mm. Yeah. You put that. That was kind of interesting. I think that was somebody we knew whose recipe gave it to me. Favorite soup. Yes, I do too, Andy. I love uh, stuffing or dressing. But anyways, now you're getting me hungry, people. Um, so, moving on to today's topic. Should YouTube be your therapist? Just what I called it. All right. Now, I don't want to offend anybody by this, but I'm trying to understand why people do these things. <coughs> there are some fairly well-known YouTubers who have mental issues. And they let you know they have mental issues. And I mean, like, they get on there and... um, Well, let me say it. Mr. Domestic, okay, if you follow him, he's got a series of videos he just put up recently where he semi-cries through them, talks about, like, basically, nobody loves me, everybody hates me, sitting in the garden eating worms all day. You know, kind of a thing. He... 
he goes on and on and on. He's not getting the recognition that he wants. Uh, he's been taken advantage of by the quilting community and uh, things like this. And it's sickening. And then you have somebody like uh, the Quilting Cowboy, who now is a life coach. And he has a lot of videos where basically it's like the world has done him wrong and he's searching himself for, I don't know what he's searching for. You think that they should really go to a psychiatrist. Yeah. And then you have Ken on Ken's creations and on any given day he's in tears over something or whatnot. Now I've stopped watching those because quite frankly, what's the point? And then what's worse are the comments that people make in their videos and they feed into these people's sense of, well, whatever they're trying to do, uh, seeking attention is what I call it and say, you know, oh, I know how you feel. I've gone through traumatic things too. And this is what's, and it's like a pity party. All these people together having a pity party. Now, it's annoying. I <laughs> find it annoying, okay? Am I sympathetic? Well, if they have a truly mental disorder problem, yeah, I'm sympathetic. Mental health is not something to laugh about. And, you know, since COVID and everything like that, I think there's more and more people that have had some issues in that. But there are places you can go for that, and I don't think it's YouTube. I don't think YouTube is the place to go for therapy on here. Because... Well, why? Why are well, you... Well, like somebody sort of says here, the quilting license, uh, they say that it is what sells. People get subscribers mm. making videos like that. Yes, that is very, very true. Um, in the case of Ken's Creations, that's exactly what he's doing all the time uh, with that. Um, but the, what I'm saying is if they truly have a problem, a mental problem. They need to go to a therapist, a licensed therapist, whoever that is. Don't get your therapy on YouTube because there's a lot of nut jobs on YouTube. We all know that. We've seen their videos. You know, um, there's a lot of people who don't have videos on YouTube who write comments, and those comments sometimes can be add to the problem. They do not solve the problem at all. Um, these are not licensed therapists on there helping these people out. Yeah, I like videos that, uh, uh, you know, what's more informative and things like that. Or in, or it could be just entertaining. Yeah. Um, but uh, when st somebody starts um, going through and telling you their life story and their, uh, that they're not well, or especially they're not mentally well, then it's something they don't really want to watch. No. And then you get people on here who do this. And you've all seen these videos. Hi. I'm back. I'm sorry. It's been a couple of weeks since I've put up a video. I haven't been well. I don't want to get into it right now, but I'm just so not happy. And I'm sorry. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Click unsubscribe. Like, really? Come on. You, you mean you don't, you have to turn to YouTube to get some kind of comfort? Now, having said that, there is a positive side to YouTube for things like that. I mean, let's think about it. When we all went through COVID, when we were all being isolated and everything like that, I am sure many people turned to COVID for, uh, to get them out of their... YouTube. Or sorry, YouTube. Um, to get, and I stand corrected again. Um, you know, it was something to get us through COVID. It was entertainment. We we got to, to, to learn from other people, things like that. So there is a positive side to this, okay? But that's not how some of these people are using it. They're using it because they want to be... Well, a friend of mine used to call it getting stroked. Meaning, you need people to say nice things about you and make commiserating noises and things and that to make you feel better. But I think that's dangerous. Because the more of that you get, the more of it these people want. And then as soon as somebody makes one negative comment, 
it throws them over the edge again and they're in tears yeah. you know as a content creator you have to grow a thick skin okay i've had negative comments and yeah they hurt they do hurt okay but you got to get over it look at the source look at where it's coming from and in a way you are bringing it on to yourself because you're putting yourself out there and that's the other thing about these people too they're sharing too much personal information um which is uncomfortable i find that uncomfortable there there's a there's a line you know that you don't cross let's remember the people that are watching your youtube can come from anywhere in the world they're not all your friends then there's some who use it to get gifts and money as well they pretend they're people's best friend and the whole bit and there are a lot of lonely people out in youtube land who watch youtube videos and they send things and they send money as well and well they say there's a sucker born every minute right so i wonder about that i guess for me when i'm exploring new youtube channels and i do that all the time um if when somebody starts off and does the i'm sorry i turned them off i watched one yesterday somebody who does crafts or something and she's having some personal issues right now in her life and i'm sorry for her she's going through something that is you know anybody with going through it's be traumatic but i don't think you should make a youtube video about it i know maybe i'm hard-hearted i don't know what other people think um about it i just I don't think they should be dumping their misery on other people. That's not what, that's not why I go to YouTube. I go to learn things um, and for a certain amount of entertainment. Um, what are people saying here? Uh, you already saw the quilting life that says Janice says. Oh, yeah. yeah okay. okay. So Patsy says she watches YouTube for videos and crafts. Yes. Yeah. yeah uh nancy used to watch mr domestic but he's changed and needs help yes he does he needs a great deal of help uh amy says i find it the type of attention seeking annoying as well i do appreciate when a youtuber says i'm in therapy and it's helping and they encourage others to get go get therapy from a therapist media. well you want to know something that is education then yeah. if they're you know they're saying okay if you are struggling with this this or, or whatnot here's what worked for me and here's some recommendations for you but you know those ones are far and few between most of the ones that are up there they're looking for well to say the least some form of sympathy um and i guess mr d also posts on uh his instagram page and people fall for that yeah too. yeah Chance is actually, it is extremely hard to get mental health help here in Ontario. My son had waited well over a year and still can't get it. Yeah, I know. I know it's a difficult thing. And But going to YouTube isn't a solution. Yeah, YouTube, if anything, YouTube is going to make your situation worse. Because like I said, these people are vulnerable. And all it takes is one person to make one nasty comment to them. And it's going to throw them over the edge with it. Um martha says youtube has been such a wonderful tool to help me learn to be creative even better now i want to share that knowledge on my channel yeah and i think that's what i think that's really the bottom line of youtube you mean i go to ideas. youtube if my fridge breaks down or something yeah. like that to see if i i can find a solution or something but or if uh, i want to learn something new in sewing or anything else how to put something together i might go to youtube and and look for that type of thing but um i i it's not very good when when you look up a youtube channel and the first thing you see is someone uh talking to them about their personal situation and yeah things aren't going right for them and stuff like that you know i feel sorry for them because one there is a problem and also if if the only way if you don't have a, a support system in real life like in your environment and you're going to youtube looking for that support system that says there's a, a more serious problem than even you might think there is uh with it um 
Derek, hi Derek. I worry as well that with some of these people, if they are truly mentally ill, uh, YouTube may make it worse. Don't think it is necessarily constructive for any of the parties involved. Yeah, I agree with that statement too. In fact, I really can't see quite honestly how YouTube can help in those kind of situations make things better. I, I don't see how it can. Um, I don't know who Apple well, Apple iPhone. iPhone. I think that's somebody we're getting rid of. And let's get rid of that one. You said report. Report. Yeah. yeah. Remove. Okay. Faith. Hi, Faith. I so agree that now. Yeah, MX Domestic. I thought it was me when I first saw him. I couldn't tell. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about that for a minute, too. The other thing I don't like in the case of Mr. Domestic is he is not the poster boy for the LGBTQ community because he's not giving it a positive name. He's playing into a stereotype that some people have about the LGBTQ community and people who are non-binary especially or transgendered. Um, he's not doing them any any good he's he's actually hurting them because he's he's perpetuating a stereotype that they're weird i mean he's on there wearing a crown right now he's got on a quilted jacket well that's okay um and he has his fingernails painted which is the trend right now for support of the transgender community you will not catch me i support the transgender community you will not see me painting my fingernails to do that okay that's fine each to his own if you want to paint your fingernails if you're a male and you want to do that you go for it. you do you okay I, I don't have a problem with that but when you put that the whole package together that he is projecting out there he is making for those who are already who are not allies to the lgbt community it reinforces uh their negative connotation of what we represent and i don't think that's a good thing he has no right to do that quite frankly that pisses me off okay we have fought long and hard in the lgbt community to break the stereotype to enlighten people to educate people so that they um are less prejudiced and discriminatory against anybody under the umbrella of the lgbtq community and he's putting us backwards in time with that so is the quilting cowboy as well um both mr domestic and quilting cowboy have something in common their laughs their laughs if you listen to them they sound like the kind of laugh you hear on a soundtrack from a, a, a movie about people in an in a, in an asylum um they're crazy laugh they're not haha -ha, funny laugh they are a weird laugh too and like i'm sorry i'm calling them out and i am calling them out and, and there's others actually it's very disturbing to, yeah to watch those videos and i feel sorry for them yeah but then they really shouldn't be projecting that image on youtube i don't think no because it, it Okay, it's one thing they're projecting this image, it's them. It's, you know, and people can assess their impression of what they are on that level. But they, that is also being projected by some, but some people out there, and probably quite a few people, they're then whitewashing everybody that's part of the LGBT community, that they're all nuts and sluts and perverts kind of a thing based on people like that that what how they're projecting their lives on that too that's not right they shouldn't be doing that but i mean it is a free well so far it is a free world at least where we live so yeah you can be whoever you want to be i guess on youtube and of course you don't have to watch it and i don't in fact i haven't watched those two guys in quite a while it's just that they came up in my feed um and, and you it, happened to watch it the other day type yeah of thing. just because it was kind of weird like today's that mr domestic put up it was the end of mr domestic well then you get a little worried like well what do you mean the end do you mean the end of your youtube or do you mean the end of mr domestic because you know suicide 
We know all about those kind of things, right? Triggers. We don't need that on YouTube. We really don't. Um, what are people saying here? Uh, oh, Anna says, I hate those channels where people from different countries send all kinds of stuff for them to open and try on the show. Yeah. Yeah, I do too. Um, At first, it's kind of interesting. Yeah. But then after a while, everybody's sort of doing it. Yeah. And uh, Pat says, I've been looking at info on YouTube about the MB7 embroidery machine. It's very been very informative. Yeah. Yeah, I've thought about it, too. I mean, less thread changes, you know, on that. Um, yeah, that's true, Andy. People don't realize that what they put out there on YouTube will be out there forever. The same with Facebook or anything like that. That's the age we live in. And it can come back to bite you in the rear end. I like watching the history, Teresa says, and learning about different countries' things, DIY stuff, and true crime. And if someone just says they didn't post because they were ill and move on, that's okay. Um, yeah, like, that's fine. But some of them have to belabor it. Like, people get sick. People have personal tragedies in their lives. Um, we know a guy <laughs> who writes on uh, Facebook about his parents, about the passing of his parents, and that happened a long time ago. And the ironic thing was, he always said he hated his father's guts, and his father passed away, and now every year he gets teary-eyed uh, about, you know, his relationship to his father and everything, and how he misses them and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, well, okay, but do we need to know that? Is that important to us? Why should that be important to us? What are you really saying? What are you looking for? Um... And, but she says, Mr. D has gone a little over the top. Oh, yeah. Well, he's so, always been a little so over the top. Wayne but... says, I first started watching him for crafts, and now he's pretty much abandoned doing that. Yeah, he's just getting up there and doing these little... Rants. Rants. Yeah, kind of a thing. Angel says, thank you for saying that. I personally didn't think he represented the community well. No. No, he didn't. And you know, funny, in these rants he has, he doesn't mention anything about his adopted daughter nor his husband makes you kind of wonder if they're still in the picture um three says unfortunately down here there have been defam defamatory suits against youtube creators by other youtube creators that slandered mm. yeah well in the states you know the states is known for they sue everybody for everything <laughs> kind of a thing so yeah i am uh, Donna's here too. Hi, Donna. And Livy? Am I saying that right? It's too bad. I was new to the sewing closing, uh, sewing closing world. Maybe clothing world. Clothing world, right. And I followed him along in my journey, supportive of his message regarding LGBT community. He just got in way over the top. Yeah. Yeah, he started out being, you know, he was a little quirky. quirky. But, you know, yeah, he had some good videos, because that's why I was watching him. He gave good tutorials, and he he got into fa fabric design. But then it stuff. seemed like some people were giving him negative reviews because uh, that he was gay or whatever. Well, somebody and, closed down his YouTube channel. They stole it, basically, yeah, from him. Yeah, and he got very uptight about that, and just it just got worse and worse and worse over time. And it's it's really becoming disturbing. Yeah, Amy says, thing is, if Mr. D is literally in the state of mind he is presenting and is real and he was he, uh, and he was my significant other, I would have him committed. I've committed a family member before. Where is his hubby? Yeah, I don't know. Um, I've never seen a video that has his hubby make an appearance on it or whatever. His I did a is. long time ago. Did I you? saw something, but that was a long time ago Yeah, when he was more um, sane. But I don't want people to think here that we're, we are um slamming mr d okay no, no i'm just just using we're just using him as an example there are other youtube creators on there that uh have um issues issues and uh it's it's um i guess kind of annoying or not annoying it's it's not what you're looking for when you're going on a youtube video well, a you're not really downer. <laughs> you're not really looking for somebody that's telling you their personal life history and um that if you 
log on to a, if I log on to it, let's say, uh, I want to know a little bit more about my, um, uh, cover stitch machine there's a lady on there that does really good cover stitch tutorials whereas another one i went on she spent the first hour half hour discussing her personal problems mm. and i'm going i ended up turning her off because she wasn't doing what i was looking for so yeah i guess too as a content creator you have to determine for yourself what is the purpose of your channel what is it you're trying to do um, are you trying to share inspiration, ideas, your creations? Are you trying to teach people different techniques or things to help them out or whatnot? Or are you using it as, as I said in the title, a form of therapy? Um, it's kind of a one-way therapy. Uh, so, you know, you're talking really to yourself and you're leaving yourself exposed. I mean, I hope that Mr. Domestic get some professional help because that uh, as people have said here he definitely needs it i hope anybody who goes on youtube who is having these kind of issues is really seeking professional help because i think trying to, to find your help on youtube is just going to make your situation worse and we don't need that in the world do we there's enough bad things in the world yeah but uh, i guess the problem is is if youtube needs to set weed out those channels um it's a form of censorship i guess yeah so it's hard for them to decide what's appropriate and what's not yeah and amy says i don't feel like you're slamming any specific person mr g's simply right now example of what you're talking about yeah that's the only thing i'm just using his and as an example i mean i don't know mr domestic on a personal level i only know mr domestic and any of these other YouTube creators, and that's the same for anybody. You, We only know what is projected on the videos. You guys don't know us completely that well. Um, we don't tell you everything. Like, we don't tell you that Walter is really a woman and always <laughs> has been. He just had a hair growth problem. No, you know, like, there is a wall, right? It's the fourth wall that, you know, between us and video. But some YouTube creators sometimes step way over on that wall. And I don't think that's necessarily a good thing out there. Um, yeah, but how would you weed them out? That's the thing. I mean, look at the trolls that we get on, on uh, YouTube videos and stuff. And... There are some safeguards put in by YouTube, but they're not that effective. Look, I mean, we had, we had a, somebody trying to advertise something. Who knows what that came on there. I had to remove them. Um, I mean, I don't get a lot of that, but I do know some channels that get that all the time. And they have people to moderate for them to do it while they're, while they're doing a broadcast. Um, Evelyn says, trying to register for the retreat, but cannot figure out how and cannot find the link. Okay, Evelyn... All you need to do is send me an email with your first and your last name and I will register you it. And here I'll put in the chat right now my email address. So there you go, Evelyn. Um, that's my email address. Just send me uh, an email and I'll register you, and I will send you back a confirmation for it. Um, that says, I think when he had that problem with someone hacking his channel uh, is when he lost it. Maybe he had a nervous breakdown. Yeah, Patsy, I think you might be right about that. That's and, when it seems to have all started. Yeah. Um, I think he probably thought felt very violated by that. I know I would. Um... And he had a hell of a time getting things back up online again. And YouTube, from what he said, was absolutely of no help to him whatsoever. Um, so, yeah, I think that definitely contributed to it. Um, yeah, Andy, I think so, too. I think quarantine did make a lot of people crazy. Um, there's a lot of stuff on TV right now and advertising, you know, health, at least in our province, uh, mental health care and... Uh, support systems and things like that. Um, and, you know, you could see how that would contribute, contribute, 
contribute Perfect. to it, rent it lips, um, kind of a thing. Um, the only way to weed out triggering content from our YouTubers to report them that may or may not work. You know, Amy, I do. There's my system is set up so that if somebody there are certain trigger words or things like that that YouTube uh recognizes and they drop them into a special area that only i can see so i can decide whether or not i'm going to release it sometimes and actually this is good for other people to know sometimes for no apparent reason people will write a comment that there's nothing wrong with the comment and youtube's algorithm triggers it and drops it into a spot and i don't see it until weeks after the fact um so if you ever have a comment not show up that you've written and you've wondered why that might be it um because it it just gets put in this hole black hole um angel says she doesn't agree with youtube weeding out channels unless they violate terms of service which is true yeah i agree angel because then we're talking censorship, censorship. yeah um teresa it didn't make me crazy i already was so <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah, I don't know. It's just it seems like uh, in the last week, for some reason, I was picking up on the crazies out there, or the people with problems. I shouldn't call them crazies. It's that's people with problems. People with problems. You know, I feel for them. I really do. But I am not in a position, and nobody is on YouTube unless they're a licensed therapist. And if they're a licensed therapist, they're not going to go through YouTube for that kind of thing. These people need professional help, and they sh and I hope they get it. I mean, I mean, things like that could escalate and have a really bad outcome for them. Yeah, for them. Yeah, so, and that that's not good. No, that's not good. Well, I'm just glad that we're not crazy. I'm not so sure about Walter, but I mean, <laughs> I'm absolutely perfectly <laughs> fake. <laughs> ah, you're driving me crazy. Yeah, whatever uh, on it. Well... You know, we all have a we all have a, a problem, don't we? To a certain extent, you know, we all everybody have, has issues. So. Everybody has issues. Yeah, uh, I've been put in Facebook jail a couple of times. Is there something we need to know about you, Teresa, <laughs> that we don't now? Um, what did you do that got you in Facebook? No, don't tell us. <laughs> I don't think I want to know. Uh, with that, you're probably just being funny, anyways. Uh, Funny ha ha, not funny as in take me away in a straight jacket. So, anyways, I just thought because we saw this this week and it was it's conversation. It's conversation, yeah. Right I mean, right. it's something to bring up because it is something that does bother us. Yeah. So, and I'm sure at when this goes up for rebroadcast, there'll be some people who weren't here live on that and who will write me a nasty comment. So it's a it. full moon week, Cheryl says. Oh, maybe. I saw one of Mr. D's videos in which he expressed some issues and I expressed sympathy having had some experience himself. Perhaps we write that that this isn't a form of therapy. Yeah. Um and you know something else? Sometimes these videos also trigger uh problems for other people. And you'll see that in the comments. And uh, you know, that's not really being having a positive effect on your viewers you know when if it triggers negativity in them or something that hurts them um uh teresa says she that she got too blunt on facebook i guess oh <laughs> yeah well you know too that's another problem that's a conversation for another day but this i'm i am so sick of the political correctness business in this country Actually, if, if any of you saw when I was, Sean and I were on yesterday, um, I was talking about how I found when we were in Australia, I found Australians refreshingly, uh, it was very refreshing to talk to Australians because Australians don't seem, at least in my impression of them, don't seem to really worry about being so politically correct. That isn't to say that they're rude or discriminatory or anything like that. Uh, it just means they don't get that uptight. I mean, we were sitting on a, what was that? They, they call it that duck thing. Uh, remember that yeah, amphibian we were, yeah, vehicle? We, 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 that was, I think, a news, it was in New Zealand. So. Was that New Zealand? Yeah. Well, either way. I mean, well, but 
we were the, the Australians. This guy was making gay jokes. Nice now, ones. They were nice, actually. They were quite funny. I thought they were funny. But you know, we could have got. And he wasn't doing it though to be belligerent or anything no, that like that. No, that was also one. We were on a Grey Line bus tour in Australia, and he was doing that. Oh, was that yeah, that yeah. was that? Man, I'm getting mixed up. Okay. Well, whatever. I mean, we didn't find them offensive or anything like that, and they were just funny. And I had a few I could have told him, too, uh, about that. But he was just, you know, he wasn't thinking, you know, in Canada, in where we live, oh, my God, someone would be sitting there going, oh, my God, you can't say that. Oh, no. Actually, it would almost be grounds for dismissal for yeah. somebody to do that. Yeah. So, you know, but that's the topic. I don't know how I got onto that, but I was just thinking about what people say on YouTube things that, you know, may be inappropriate. Uh, and people or people get upset. I mean, these levels of in inappropriateness, too. What are they? You know, now you're afraid to say anything. Because someone's going to knife you for it. So, yeah. Um, okay. Ooh, the conversation's going by really fast on here. Uh, hi, Kate. Um, uh, Kate Murray, a little Derek late. says, I think some of these creators with issues need to have some form of professional detachment with their audience, especially if their channel is their business and livelihood. Yeah, that's true. Uh, hi, Stephanie. Uh, Facebook puts you in Facebook jail for posts from years to past that are not offensive at all. Oh, okay. I don't write a lot on Facebook. So no, I just never... look around. Say happy birthday. Everyone. Yeah, that kind of thing. Laugh at some of the things that people say. <laughs> I have issues, Angel says. A whole subscription worth. <laughs> oh, Angel. <laughs> uh, and uh, Evelyn says, never mind. Just figured it out and sent you an email. Thank you. Hope I can get in. I'm late registering as I had to hear back from my daughter when I was to dog sit for her. It's okay, Evelyn. You will get in because I still have 10 spots left. So um, unless suddenly I've had, since we've been online here, a whole bunch ahead of you, uh, which probably is not the case, but you'll be okay. I will send you a confirmation. Um, Kathleen says, I've gotten flack for a negative review on Amazon. I feel like it is a product. You should be honest. Um, I have too. I, they want reviews. I wrote a review and the company that I was writing the review about attacked me about it. And that just made me write another review, even more so. Like, shut up. Your product sucked. I mean, I, I was, I don't. And then they try and some of them try to pay you off to. to yeah, to write a good review. Yeah, they, they'll give you a free product or they'll give you a 30% discount or something like that. Um, if you write a good review. So, you know, you got to take some of the reviews on uh, Amazon with a grain of salt because of that. Um Jan says, yeah, that's a joke. Reference Ontario's mental health help. Yeah. Um, I can't, Game says, I can't even keep up with all the PC stuff. My hubby gets a list of words that aren't allowed. I mean, good gravy. How do you even remember? Yeah, exactly. You know, like now you're afraid to go out and you might offend somebody you're meeting for the first time if they don't give you their proper, if they don't give you their pronouns. You know, hi, my name's Steven. I identify, my pronouns are he and him. Hi, my name is Walter. My pronouns are them, they, their. Well, they're not, but <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, I'm sorry. I, if I'm not using your correct pronouns, um, that's not because I'm trying to be belligerent to you or be nasty. It's just I didn't know. But God, get over yourself, really. I mean, if you... If you look like a woman, if you smell like a woman, then you must be a woman. If you look like a man, then you smell like a man, then you must be a man. So excuse me for saying he or she, because grammatically it's correct. And if you don't like that, then I'm sure you can then tell you me can very tell politely me, yeah. and go, well, no, actually, I prefer them there. Then I'll go, okay, no problem. I will try to use that. But pardon me if I slip up, <laughs> because it's not part of my usual language but i will try okay that's all you can ask for it's, you know try um and just seeing what uh, jan says what are you making on a 3d printer seam rippers 
<laughs> yeah. And uh, Pamela says, hi, Pamela, late to the party, but I'll be sure to catch up. Yeah. Well, we started earlier today. For those of you that came late, you're really not late. We start at one hour earlier because it's Thanksgiving and we're going out to my sister's for dinner shortly. Um, Sewing with Lil Wayne says, the only time I go on Facebook is to see what's going on with quilting groups. I don't post anything on my own page since April. Yeah, I can't be bothered posting much. Occasionally I'll write something, show a quilt or yeah, something. Yeah, I go on and just look around sometimes to see if anybody's posted anything. I usually don't put anything up. And Nancy says, I registered. Okay, Dad, did you just put the email in? Or, Nancy, were you already registered? I can't remember who's registered on the list. I haven't got the list memorized. But uh, if you did register, then I and then I've sent you a confirmation. And if you just did it a few minutes ago, you will get a confirmation after this is over. Okay. Um, Patsy doesn't. Yeah, yeah you well. know, that's a whole other conversation yeah. for another day. But um, I, uh, I understand, especially people that are uh, more set in their ways and older. Uh, it takes a while to understand all that stuff and i still don't understand yeah. it but so m says i feel we're going to talk about jordan peterson in this episode at a point just a feeling who's jordan peterson that name sounds familiar well yeah we're talking about him now m because you brought it up but <laughs> i don't know who jordan peterson is that name sounds familiar can't remember okay nancy yeah uh, you'll get an email in uh within the next half hour uh confirming it well, you're looking up this Jordan Peterson. So Jordan uh, Peterson is... Is a clinical psychologist? Oh, yeah, he... I'd have to look at... I, I did read something about him. Is he a nut job? Uh, yeah, he, he, I don't know. I have to... There's something about... He looks like he might be a far yeah, right... Yeah, he's a non... I think he... Criticized. Oh, he was the professor at the North York or at York University, who be, yeah. um, said he refused to use the pronouns yeah, and all yeah, that yeah, stuff. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, I know who he is. Oh, yeah, him. Oh, we're not even going to talk about him because he's just on the other end of the spectrum of nuts. Um, uh, Teresa says the hospital I work for lists preferred pronouns. We have to use them. Fine, but I have to correct the doctor's dictation because they can't figure out how to dictate a re. Well, report grammatically correct. Yeah, it is a whole other video about Peterson. In fact, I think we talked about him yeah, a long time ago or up. something that one time. Um, 12 Rules of Life, he's Canadian. Yeah, uh, we'll have to look that up. Yeah, that's a topic for another time. That's a topic, yeah. We're getting... Um, yeah. Um, I don't... I have enough time, hard enough time when I go to, to the medical profession and I have a female doctor and they're always saying... When you talk to him or your doctor as being a male, and I always have to correct them and say, my doctor's female. <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't really like them putting the onus on me. Um, I'm glad. Uh, give me your name. I will call you by your name. Okay? Um, the pronouns, I don't have a problem with them. Just don't get really huffy and in my face because I inadvertently forgot to use your pronoun. I mean, I have 65 years of using the usual pronouns in the usual way. It's going to take a while for me to get trained, okay? So don't jump all over my head because you want to be called them and I called you she or he. All right? Just get over yourself. Really? Just get over yourself. People spell my name wrong all the time. Say la vie. People call me Steve. I'm Steven. Say la vie. Walter calls me Steve. Um, you know, like I don't... It, do you get my point? It, it's okay. It, I'm not going to jump on your face for it. Okay? When you get to know me better or whatever, you'll call me what I prefer to be called. Okay? But if I'm meeting you for the first time, then I am going to slip up. You'll be lucky if I even remember your name if I meet yeah, you the actually, first time. Yeah, actually, I usually have a hard time just remembering people's yeah. names. So, you know, it, it just... People get just so bent out of shape over the stupid things. Like, how is it going to change the price of rice in China? You know, pick the mountain you want. To, pick the mountain you want to die on. Really, like, think about it. How is it that if I slip up, calling you the right pronoun or the pronoun you want to be called by, 
how is that going to bring about world peace and feed the world and create a cure for cancer? Anyway. In other words, there's bigger things in the world to get over. I have over. to go upstairs and get my pants changed. <laughs> Why? What you do in them? No, these are my reptiles. Yeah, okay. Well, we're going... Yeah, well, we're time is up. So, geez. Wow. Okay. Be that way. Yeah, some languages don't have gender for an app. Yeah, I know. Yeah. How, how do they use that? But anyways, those are topics for another day. So, we have to go because it's turkey time and everything. Um, and Walter has to change his pants. Well, actually, the languages that don't have gender pro pronouns don't have a problem because it doesn't matter. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so, anyways, I hope those of you that are Canadian have a good Thanksgiving. And um, the rest of you just enjoy the rest of the weekend. And we'll see everybody next week. Next week will be regular time, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard uh, as well. And we'll see you on the other videos. And don't forget, if you want to come to the retreat, register. And we'll see everybody next week. Talk to you later.